Imagine being a high energy charged particle whizzing through space at near light speed, being deflected now and again by different magnetic fields and then bursting through the atmosphere, ripping apart other atoms in the process and sending a rain of atomic material down to Earth's surface. That is exactly what you're gonna to see today, actual real life cosmic rays. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the Simon Dan Show, the place where the sky is the limit, unless of course you're at escape velocity. My name is Simon Dan, thank you very much for joining me. Congratulations, you've just won a trip back in time to the year 1912, taking a hot air balloon ride with physicist Victor Hess. During your ride, you talk about the weather, I guess, and you notice that the radiation in the atmosphere increases as the balloon goes higher and higher. Cosmic rays consist of protons, neutrons, electrons, and neutrinos. But where do these cosmic rays come from? Well, some come from our own sun. But the majority of them are from well outside of our solar system and perhaps even our galaxy. The truth is we don't really know where these other cosmic rays are coming from. Most likely they're accelerated by supernova blasts of dying stars, but they could also come from quasars, gamma ray bursts, or even some unknown physics of some weird astrophysical object. You look at physicist Victor Hess, but he shrugs. The truth of the matter is they are here and they're real. In fact, they're passing through your heart right now as we are talking. How do we know this? Well, we can use a cloud chamber much like this one here, to see them. You see, when these cosmic rays reach Earth's atmosphere, they collide with all the atoms contained within it, and the particles from that reaction collide with more atoms, and so on and so on, until the cascading atoms reach the surface. One of the more common particles that are produced from this process is called a muon. These muons are like electrons, negatively charged, but a bit heavier. And it is these muons that we're going to try and detect today with our cloud chamber. So I've already prepped the tank by sticking the felt to the bottom like so. And once that's all dried, you need to soak that felt in 99% alcohol, which I'm going to do now. So you've really got to Soak that felt, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so here we have some dry ice or frozen CO2. Please make sure you do this in a well-ventilated room. And I'm gonna pop the lid of the tank on top of the ice like so. And then we place the tank that we've just prepared with the alcohol on top upside down. like so, and then we wait. So what happens now is the alcohol that was in the tank at room temperature now starts to evaporate within the tank. But as the alcohol starts to sink to the bottom of the tank, it is cooled by the dry ice and it wants to turn back into a liquid. This means the air at the bottom of this tank will be super saturated, giving us the perfect chance to see these cosmic rays. When the muons zip through the cloud of alcohol, they ionize the air they pass through. Basically, they knock the atoms, electrons off. This means the air becomes charged, which in turn attracts the alcohol vapor, which then condenses into droplets. And these droplets then trace the path that the cosmic ray made through the chamber.
Now the absolute cherry on the icing of this cosmic cake is these muons prove Einstein's theory of relativity. You see, these muons should be decaying into much smaller particles within about two microseconds of being produced. That means we wouldn't be able to see them in this chamber right now. Because they are traveling at 98% the speed of light, they are experiencing time dilation and as such are experiencing time over 20 times slower than we are. That means they age slower, giving them enough of a lifespan to be seen right here in my cloud chamber. So what we are seeing here is relativity proving particles that have no real known origin and that have journeyed an unimaginable amount of distance. Doesn't science sometimes really know how to humble you? Well, that brings an end to this week's show. I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I hope you did as well. If you would like to make your own cloud chamber, I'll leave the instructions in the description. Please be careful when handling the dry ice, use gloves, and do not use the 99.9% .9 alcohol for consumption. Thank you all very much for watching. I will be back next week for the final show in the season, where we'll be taking a look at the Drake equation. See you then.